I want to say first of all uh, to Calvary Baptist Church how much I appreciate you and your support uh, for Sarah Jackson and her family for the last year and a half. Last year, May of last year, uh, a young lady came forward with some accusations against the former pastor that was here at Calvary Baptist Church and it was heartbreaking to all of us. It was shocking, devastating news. Uh, looking back now, over the last year and a half, I don't think I would have handled anything any differently than the way I handled it. I did the only thing that I could do and that was to listen to what she had to say and uh, do my best to try and ascertain whether or not the accusations that she made were true based on what she told me and our deacons in the meetings that we had or phone conversations that we had, we concluded that her accusations against the former pastor were credible. And so we just proceeded uh, to move forward with that belief. And uh, of course she went to the police and she filed her report and investigation began. And it took them quite a while to gather their information. Uh, but for over the last several months, we've seen a series of events where uh, he was arrested, where he was charged with multiple felonies and misdemeanors. And then um, today, uh, we went to the courthouse there in Towson and uh, were present when he waived his right to a trial by jury and a trial by judge and pleaded guilty to some of the charges, not all of them, but some of them. And uh, the sentencing will take place on January the 6th. And I just wanna say that I believe that our church has done the best that it could under the circumstances. I believe you've all been strong. I believe you've trusted the Lord. I believe you've trusted me and you followed me and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate that. And I wanna just tell you that I'm praying for Sarah and her family, praying for Brother Hall and his wife, and everybody that's involved, I mentioned on Sunday night to please pray for Cameron Giovanelli's family, his wife, his children, his parents, and everybody, uh, his brothers and sisters, everybody that's been affected by this. I want us to continue to pray for them. Uh, but I would like to make one other statement before uh, we get the youth choir up here to sing, and that is this. I don't expect an apology from him. So on his behalf, I want to apologize first of all to our church for the pain, the hurt, the disappointments, the mixed emotions that you've had to deal with for the last year and a half. I'm so sorry that you've had to go through that, the many tears that have been shed. I wanna apologize to our young people, the teenagers and the children of Calvary Baptist Church for having to deal with and think about and worry about the thought that somebody that they look up to in this church could ever hurt them in any way. I'm sorry, and I apologize to you for any hurt that you've had to endure. I wanna to apologize to our town, Dundalk, Maryland, a city that we, every single day, try to reach out to with the good news of the gospel, tell them about Jesus Christ, tell them that Jesus loves them and died for them. And now for our church to have this stain, to have this, this shame and this reproach attached to our church because of the mistakes, the decisions, the choices and the sins of somebody else. I wanna to say to Dundalk, Maryland, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that our church has in any way, shape or form let you down. And we wanna let you know that our church, led by me here, the pastor at this church, we're gonna do our best to make sure that nothing like that ever happens again. We're gonna make sure that anybody that comes to our church, comes on this property, and comes in these school buildings and Sunday school classes in this church, we want you to know that you're protected, you're safe. We want you to know that we've got every possible measure that we could imagine and think of to keep you, your family, your children safe. I want to reiterate my position that I am 100% in support of the victim. I'm support of her, her family, and I want you to know that uh, I stand with any victim that's been abused, been taken advantage of. I think our church knows that. I've gone above and beyond uh, to try and reiterate that. And uh, I just, today, uh, there was a sense of closure. It may not have been what we wanted, uh, but there was some closure for her, for her family, 
And I'm praying that God will help us to be able to put this behind us as a church. I covet your prayers as a pastor. I've been on the phone all afternoon. I'll be on the phone, I'm sure, for quite a while in the days ahead. Uh, but I thank God for his grace and his strength. And I just wanted to reiterate to our church. I wanted to reiterate to our community and anybody that may be watching this on live stream that Pastor Stacy Shifflin, the Calvary Baptist Church, uh, is standing against any kind of a sexual abuse or crimes of abuse towards people. We do not cover it up. We do not, uh, we do not soften of the blow. We do not water it down for our friends. We do not play it down. We believe in justice. We believe in judgment. And we believe at the end of the day that God will be glorified if truth is upheld and righteousness is upheld and those that are guilty stand uh, account for what they do. And so I just wanted to do that tonight, get that out of the way and uh, let you know that God is still on the throne and that God is still working, doing great things at Calvary Baptist Church. Amen.